Hello, good, good afternoon everyone. I am Professor Sukruti Joshi from Department of Applied Science Chemistry at Rai University Ahmedabad. Today we are going to learn about thermodynamics, some of the terms of thermodynamics. So basically when we are taking an introduction to thermodynamics, we have to know that what is thermodynamics? It is the study of change in any form of heat or energy during any process. That thing is known as thermodynamics. The basic definition of thermodynamics is the study of the flow of heat in other form of in a, or any other form of energy into or out of the system as it undergoes a physical or a chemical transformation is called thermodynamics. It is one branch of chemistry only in which we are studying about heat, energy or whatever it's transferred from one place to another place or from one side to another side. Now some of the terms and basic concepts of thermodynamics before we are taking start into thermodynamics we have to know these things first is system second is surroundings and third is boundary so what is the system a quantity of matter or region in which in of the universe in which is chosen for thermodynamic study is called system you can see that a thing or a total area in uh, which is taken in the consideration to take it as a to take into consideration for study that thing is known as system second is surroundings the mass or region outside the system or the rest is known as surrounding so uh, above or you can say rest from that system part is known as surroundings third is boundary the real or imaginary surface that separates out the system from its surrounding is known as boundary as you can consider an example of cricket stadium you can see that the basic the pitch portion of the cricket ground is known as system its boundary you can consider as a boundary and the audience rack is known as surrounding so that is a best example of this type that what is a system what is a surrounding and what is your boundary here one image is given to you this portion which you are taken into consideration for your study or your, for your research whatever you are doing here that is known as system the rest of the part is known as surrounding and the imaginary surface or the imaginary line which separate out the system and the surrounding is known as boundary now there are two types of systems are there first is homogeneous system and second is heterogeneous system basically first thing is a phase what is a phase we have to take consider what is the definition of phase so here a phase is defined as a homogeneous physically distinct and mechanically separable portion of the system that is known as phase as we know that there are three types of phases are there solid liquid and gas now two types of system are there homogeneous system and heterogeneous system first is homogeneous system when a system is uniform throughout it is called a homogeneous system a homogeneous system is made up of one phase only and the examples of homogeneous systems are a pure single solid liquid or gas mixtures of gases and true solution of solid and liquid here you can see that the pure things are all come across your homogeneous system either pure solid either pure liquid or either pure gas or you can consider also mixture of gases it should be one phase only it can be mixtures of anything but it should be in one phase only then and then only it is known as homogeneous system now what is heterogeneous system a heterogeneous system is one which consists of two or more phases in other words it is not uniform throughout it can be changed the phases of your component the phases of the system is changed from starting point to the end point now here the examples of heterogeneous systems are ice in contact with water ice in contact with vapor and third is ice water and vapor constitute and separate phases therefore this system is known as heterogeneous system you can see that ice is a solid form while water is a liquid form 
ice is solid while vapor is a gaseous form so from one phase to another phase it is changing therefore it is known as heterogeneous system now some of the terms that we have to know that we are coming across the thermodynamics first is enthalpy what is enthalpy at constant volume the heat content of the system is same is the same as their internal energy as no pv work is done but in constant pressure process the system also expands energy in doing pv work now the basic definition of the enthalpy is given here the total heat content of a system at constant pressure is equivalent to the internal energy e plus the pv energy this is called enthalpy it it is coming from the word that greek word it is known as enthalpy is divided into two parts n and thalpy you can say thalpy also as an thalpus therefore n is the the meaning of n in greek is in while the meaning of thalpus is heat therefore the total word becomes enthalpy of the system and is represented by the symbol h it is represented by capital letter h thus the enthalpy of the system can be defined by the equation capital h is equal to e plus pv here h is enthalpy e is internal energy pv is your pressure and volume you can say your internal energy only now that this equation becomes your equation number 1 now in the equation number 1 above e p and v all are state functions they are changing with the state therefore they are known as state functions this h the value of which depends on the values of e p v must also be fraction of state must be a function of state you can see that enthalpy is also a state function now change in enthalpy when we are we have to calculate change in enthalpy how can we calculate it from this way if delta h be the difference of enthalpy of a system the final state h2 and that is the initial state h1 when we have to consider the change in enthalpy at that time the final state and the initial state both has to be considered so final state enthalpy is h2 while the initial state enthalpy will be represented by h1 so delta h that is the change in enthalpy delta h is equal to h2 minus h1 it can be represented here only now uh, we substituting the value of h2 and h1 as from 1 and 2 we have delta h is equal to e2 plus p2 e2 minus e1 plus p1 v1 here we can see that we are putting the value of h and h here h2 and h1 it is represented by e plus pv so here h2 e2 plus p2 v2 minus e1 plus p1 v1 now we are taking common e2 minus e1 plus p2 e2 minus p1 v1 e2 minus e1 that is final state in, uh, internal energy minus initial state internal energy it becomes delta e plus delta pv the change in pressure and volume from final to initial state if p is constant while the gas is expanding we can write delta h is equal to delta e plus p delta v here p remains constant therefore we have to take out from the from the change therefore p delta v or you can write delta h is equal to delta e plus w w is equal to work now we are writing it as equation number 3 here this is equation number 2 this becomes equation number 3 as you all know that w is equal to p delta v therefore we write this value p delta v as w that is your work now the second term is entropy how can you write entropy or how can you explain entropy so here entropy is a measure of molecular disorder or molecular randomness as the system becomes more disordered the positions of the molecules becomes less predictable and the entropy increases now definition of entropy how can we define entropy so entropy is a thermodynamic state quantity that is measure of the randomness or disorder of the molecules of the system as we know that as the phase changes the randomness or the disorderness of molecules also changes the arrangement of the molecules are also changing and that way it is the measured by entropy and that way entropy will be increased according to that the symbol of entropy is s capital s it is represented by capital s while the change is represented by delta s you can see here that 
delta is a sign of change therefore it is represented by delta s the entropy of system is a state function and it depends only on the initial and the final states of the system as we know that when we have to consider the changes in any of the thing we are taking the difference between final state and the initial state the change in entropy delta s for any process is given by the equation delta s is equal to delta s final minus s initial that is the entropy of final state minus entropy of initial state when s final is greater than s initial delta s is positive as we can see here that this value should be lesser and this value should be high then and then only we are getting delta s is in positive and if we get the value of s initial as greater and s final is less then we are getting delta s entropy your entropy the change in entropy will be negative now numerical definition of entropy in uh, 1850 Clausius introduced a numerical definition of entropy according to him entropy of a system is constant quantity when there is no communication of heat when heat flows into the system the entropy increases by q by t and heat flowing out of the system it produces a corresponding decrease as we know that when heat comes or flows into the system the entropy increases at as the phase will be changed and that way the disorderness will be higher and therefore the entropy will be higher but here heat flowing out of the system it produces a decrease in the entropy as the phase will not be changed like as it is and it will be decreased according to that the entropy the entropy could be precisely defined as for a reversible change taking place at a fixed temperature t the change in entropy delta s is equal to heat energy absorbed or revolved divided by the temperature t you can say that your change in entropy can be given by delta s is equal to q by t q is your energy t is your temperature or you can say q is your heat right so q is your heat and t is your temperature if heat is absorbed then delta s is positive and there will be increase in entropy if heat is evolved delta s is negative and there is a decrease in entropy now entropy is equal to the heat energy divided by absolute temperature therefore it is measured in entropy units that is eu the entropy units will be represented by eu which are calories per degree per mole calorie per mole per kelvin the unit u can be represented by this in the si system the units are joules per mole per degree you can represent it by this j mole inverse into kelvin inverse you are representing your temperature in the kelvin degrees these are re represented by u one eu is equal to 4.184 your unit now we are going to learn here three laws of thermodynamics from that first law of thermodynamics it is also known as the law of conservation of energy energy cannot be created cannot be destroyed as we know that con law of con conservation of energy it gives us that energy cannot be created and cannot be destroyed it can only be transferred from one phase or one form to another form but it cannot be destroyed it cannot be produced therefore the total energy of the universe remains constant it remains constant only it can change but it cannot become zero or it cannot become full energy can however be converted from one form to another or transferred from system to surroundings or vice versa but it cannot become totally nil now the statement of first law of thermodynamics the total energy of an isolated system remains constant though it may change from one form to another form now when a system is changed from state a to state b it undergoes a change in the internal energy from ea to eb here when you are consider this delta e is equal to eb minus ea this is your energy energy will be changed from final state this is your initial state this energy change is brought about by the evolution or absorption of heat and or by work being done by the system as the total energy of the system remain must remain constant we can write the mathematical statement of the first law as delta e is equal to q minus w here your q is your heat w is your work and delta e is the change in your energy it becomes equation number one 
here you can see that where Q is the total amount of heat supplied to the system and W is the work done by the system. Now the net energy change of a closed system is equal to the heat transferred from to the system minus the work done by the system. Second law of thermodynamics. Before we are taking consider that what is second law of thermodynamics, we have to know some terms. Spontaneous, what is spontaneous process, what is non-spontaneous process and what is entropy. So here, a process which proceeds of its own accord without any outside assistance is known as, is termed as spontaneous or natural process, for example mountain climbing or gas flow. Second, what is a non-spontaneous process? The reverse process which does not proceed on its own and it referred to as a non-spontaneous or a natural process. It requires something like some energy or heat from outside to complete itself. Now what is entropy? As we know that entropy is a thermodynamic state quantity. It is measure of the randomness or disorder of the molecules of the system. Statement of the second law of thermodynamics, whenever a spontaneous process takes place, it is accompanied by an increase in the total energy of the universe, that is delta S, universe is equal to delta S system plus delta S surrounding. When an unreversible spontaneous process occurs, the entropy of the system and the surrounding increases. In other words, delta S universe is greater than zero. When a reversible process occurs the entropy of the system remains constant delta s universe is equal to zero since the entire universe is undergoing spontaneous change it is stated as the entropy of the system is constantly increasing here in this thing you can see that as the phases are changing the entropy will be changed solid in the solid phase when a water is in the form of ice the molecules are very well arranged it is less disorder and lower entropy second one when it becomes liquid form the water will be in liquid form at that time it becomes somewhat disordered and the entropy will be somewhat hard and in the third phase when it becomes directly converted into the vapor phase at that time it becomes more disordered and the entropy is very much hard as you can see here the arrangement will be disordered it is disarranged now third law of thermodynamics, the statement of third law of thermodynamics is at absolute zero temperature the entropy of pure crystal is zero that is S is equal to zero at T is equal to zero Kelvin. When the temperature becomes zero there will be no any other entropy in that and S becomes totally zero. The entropy of a substance varies directly with temperature. The lower the temperature, the lesser the entropy. The lower the entropy. For example, water above 100 degree at one atmosphere exists as a gas and has higher entropy, or you can say higher disorderness. The water molecules are free to roam about in the entire container. When the system is cooled, the water vapor condenses to form a liquid. If we cool the solid crystal still further, the vibrations of the molecules held in the crystal lattice get slower and they have very little freedom of movement, very little disorderness will be there and hence very small entropy will be there. Finally, at absolute zero temperature, when all the things are freezed, all molecular vibration ceases and water molecules are in perfect order, now the entropy of the system becomes zero. Here you can see that at higher temperature the vibrations will be very high. A solid crystal, violet molecular vibrations and entropy is very low. In this way, here yeah, the entropy is very little. Slow molecular vibrations, the temperature will be lower. And at zero degree temperature there will be no vibrations can be seen here. And no molecular vibrations, perfect order and entropy will be zero. Thank you.